Good afternoon. Welcome to Creations by Julie. I am Julie and we are going to work with the Magnolia design today, a craft kit. But before we do that, while I, let's give people a little bit of time to hop on and let me double check and make sure our live is showing up and it looks like it is. Let me get this going so Ed can hopefully see your comments. If you have any questions, be sure and ask, and if he doesn't catch them, I will, I will go back and answer questions or whatever at the end of the live. So I think I've got you pulled up, Ed. So, okay, before we get started on the kit, let me just tell you a little bit about Magnolia Design. It is a company um, that sells stencils and chalk paste, chalk ink, and they do sell surfaces and stuff. You do not have to use their surfaces, uh, but they came out this month. Is the, this is the first craft kit. They have come out with this craft kit that when you sign up for it, it's $19.99 plus $5 shipping. So roughly a little bit under $25, right at $25. So um, every month is a different project and you get everything in your box that you need to complete the project. You get sample paste, you get whatever surface, you get instructions and I'm going to show you all that. Um, and, but now you have, when you sign up, you have to commit for three months. After three months, you can cancel. And honestly, if you want to do things for Christmas, now is when you want to sign up because I'm pretty sure uh, November will be Christmas. The one for, <coughs> excuse me, for October. Ed, will you reach in there and get me a bottle of water? That's the one. I seem to always forget something. I didn't get any water and the allergies are a little rough today. So, I think he's gonna tilt the camera down a little bit and we're gonna open the box and I'm gonna show you what all is in. And I'm gonna do exactly like the instructions tell you so you can go back and if you've got a kid watch this and do step by step if it doesn't make sense to you okay this this is the kit for this month for October and what you get we'll go through this in a minute but you, these are your instructions and Ed you'll just have to tell me if I'm holding it where they can see them it's yeah. two pages of instructions step by step um, I read them and I'm going to point out to you there's a couple of places I would do things a little bit different but I'm going to do exactly like they say so that it makes more sense to you but this is the stencil it's called the uh, fall minis I believe I'm probably going to have to put on my glasses to do all this uh, fall minis yeah and you get 12 one, two, three, four, yeah 12 different stencils half of them are like for autumn and Thanksgiving and half of them are for Halloween. There are many stencils, so they would fit on a lot of different things. And you get the whole, the whole thing. So that's what comes in the kit. And now, this is what you need to make your project. It's going to be a little wooden like tree ornament, or but we're gonna put beads on it. Um, this comes with the jute. You could just stencil this and hang it on your tree, but we're going to take this jute off and make uh, something else. You get a squeegee. You get, in this particular one, you get two paste. You get a black and a tiger orange, or orange tiger. Orange tiger, it's called. You get those. You get the jute that you need to put on the thing. And then you get all these beads. And of course, they're already painted and everything. It tells you in the directions like what um, pattern to use for the beads. But you can always make up your own. You can put more beads, you can put less beads. Okay, but the first thing we want to do, you would have to decide what stencil you want to use. We're gonna, and here's one thing I would do different. I probably would stencil this first 
so it has time to dry and I could do front and back. But they don't suggest that. They suggest starting with this one just like this. We're going to open these stencils. And I have one actually that is brand new that I'm gonna give away to somebody. All you have to do to be eligible is comment. And I'm going to do a live next Monday and I'm just gonna scroll through, scroll through the comments and pick a winner. Okay, so there's our stencil. Uh, you could you just decide which one you want to do because see they all fit hold, on here. Hold it up. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So you the things you're going to need a pair of scissors. For this project, I also suggest you get just a little piece of tape. Um, I think I'm going to do. You can do two colors. I think I'm just going to do the orange and I'm gonna do the Thanksgiving. I'm not a big Halloween person, so I'm gonna make mine the Thanksgiving. And you're just gonna take your stencil and cut out whichever one you decide to use for this project. And I'm gonna show you how these can be used on something else too. But for this project, we're gonna do give thank Thanksgiving and we're gonna do it all in orange. So the first thing I do, and once again, Ed, I need a magic marker. I mean. I Sharpie. The first thing you want to do when you get your transfer, whether you're cutting out one or you get a brand new transfer, is to mark the back of it. These I probably will cut and I'll put on an eight by 10, what they call a backing sheet, but you just mark it so that you know that's the back because after you clean it, you need to put it back on there. Now, when you're doing on wood, if you're doing anything other than material, you're going to want to do what they call fuzz, these stencils. This is our tacky towel, but you can use anything. You don't have to use this, uh, it's available, but you just wanna peel. Actually, we're not gonna do that because that would be the way I would do it and that's not what the instructions tell you. So I caught myself there. They tell you, all right, to tie a knot, take your jute, and to tie a knot through the, find one end of it, and they give you a lot of jute. You won't need all this. Find an end to it, and they tell you to take it and tie it through, and this is where you might need a little bit of tape on the end of this. So the way you would do that is just take a little bit little piece of tape and put kind of on the end where it sticks out and then you want to squish it really small to where really here at the end all you've got is tape and it's really tiny and it goes through the hole real easy and then you want to tie a couple of knots into your wood piece maybe two you want to make sure it's on there good and tight you could add a little bit of glue if you wanted to. All right, you get it tied on there really tight. Let me move these two things. <clears throat> so that's one end of your jute. And then cut off, cut off your excess. If you wanted to add just a little bit of uh, glue right there, you could keep it from coming undone and I think I might just put just a tad you don't want much that was probably more than I wanted but but it should keep our knot from slipping okay so you've got that step two says using the other end of your jute so we're going to have to find the other end of our jute and you want to make sure there's no um, knots and stuff in it. So just pull the jute out. And like I said, they give you way too much jute. But you can use it on other projects and that's what's good. I 
I plan every month to show you the craft kit and how to do it. But they also give you the link on this paper to go to a video on YouTube. Okay, so we've got the other end of our jute. They say to take it and spread your fingers apart. We're gonna make our tassel. And just depending on how far you wanna spread your fingers, but you're gonna wrap it around your fingers 20 to 30 times. I'm gonna do 25. That's one, two. You should cut it where it don't fan. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut it, preferably up there at the top. That wasn't long enough, so it may just be 24. Okay, then you're gonna cut off a small piece of your jute. And you're gonna put it through the middle, right here. Trying, see I wanted that piece to come around and catch. You, if you catch, I mean, the couple of sprigs are not gonna make any difference, but kind of catch at the top of your jute, kind of hold it tight and catch that other piece. And then you're gonna tie a couple of knots to hold your jute together. At the top here. Pull it really tight. And I'm gonna let these two pieces hang down. Okay? All right. Then you're gonna take down here where you've got your bottom of your circle you're going to take and cut all those like this. So you kind of got a tassel going on here. There's one I didn't get. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I kind of thought the next step was a little confusing, but I figured it out. <laughs> it took me a few minutes. But what they say do is, um, Hold the jute tassel as straight as possible, the even length, then cut the circle to make the strands. Trim the strands to shape the bottom of your tassel. After shaping your tassel strands, it's time to make the top of your tassel. To hide the knot you just, you just made, fold your strands inside out covering the knot, which confused me and I'm like, what? <laughs> but what they mean here where you have your knot in the middle of your cuts, instead of Doing it this way, they say turn it out wrong side out, fold it down this way to where your knot is here at the bottom. So, does that make sense? Go ahead and get that in. That may be the vet calling about the dog. Okay, now here's where they did not tell you, and I think I'm gonna tell you now, because right here where your finger is, you're gonna have to run some jute through there in a few minutes to make the top of your tassel. So I would suggest either putting a little stick, uh, putting, I'm gonna use, I'm actually gonna stick this needle through there because it make, it'll make it real easy for me to put the jute here and pull it through. But what they want you to do is to fold it down, put that needle through there, and, and kind of hold it tight. And you know how a tassel has things that go around the top. The first time I did it, I couldn't get that hole big enough to run the tassel through when I was making tassels earlier. So you're going to take another piece of your jute just from the end here. And you know, I it doesn't matter how long. But you're going to take it and you're going to, it could go down longer, fold this around and you're going to start wrapping the very, really tight the very end of your tassel, right there, okay? And then you're gonna tie knots in it. When I first tried making tassels, I didn't put anything there and I held my jute so tight, I couldn't get the top through there. But this is just making the little top of your tassel. You could cut the jute a little bit longer and do it quite a few times. 
okay. So you see what we did? We just made the top part of our tassel and now we're gonna kind of shape our tassel. So you can cut that off pretty close there. Again, you could add a little bit of glue to it if you needed to. We still have this attached to our, our ring, okay? So now you're just gonna, you can do this now or you could do it later. You're just gonna trim up your tassel a little bit. You can cut it like circle, shorter on the sides, whoops, or whatever you wanna do. So there, there's your tassel. Have y'all guessed what we're making yet? I don't even know what they call these, but beaded tassels or People put them in their dough bowls and they put them on their um, tear trays and stuff like that. Okay, so you've got that done. You could put a little, little, little bit of glue there if you wanted. Like I said, you don't want much because you don't want to see it. Okay, and set that aside. Okay, so we are actually on step... Um, Seven says cut the jute and take the cut piece and the jute in your thumb and tie tightly together, forming a few knots, then trim the extra. Step eight, using the jute attached to the wooden round, which that would be all of this jute <laughs> here. Thread your beads, stringing your beads in a pattern of two natural, then one orange. Repeat the pattern all the way down. You can use up all your beads or you can just use a few of your beads. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to make it easier to run this little piece of jute through my beads. I'm gonna put just a little bit of scotch tape there and twist it to where it's really tight. You also can put a little bit of glue on your jute and that will make it, just, it just helps string the beads, okay? So we're gonna get our beads here is where you can make it as short or as long as you want to. If you want it shorter, don't put on all the beads. If you want it as long as you can go, put all the beads on there. Let's see if I can put it on the top of this and they not roll off. And the pattern they suggest using, they even tell you what pattern to use to make sure if you wanted to use all the beads. Okay, they're all on there. They said do, no they're not, there's one more, hang on. Ah. Now, it's so nice not to have to paint the beads. Okay, and doing things with beads now are very popular. All right, so we're gonna take our jute out and you're going to do two natural and then one orange. One, two, you can change up the pattern if you want to. You, I mean, you get creative, but they just give you the instructions to do it the way they did it, to get all your product used. So two natural, one orange, and that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna use all the beads so that you can see just how long it is. And it's just a matter of threading them on there. Has anybody had any questions? Mm -hmm. And then you just, you know, push them all the way down. I'm sure we could cut off some of this jute. So you want it right down. You don't want it super, super tight, but you want it right down to the end of your wood. Okay, so you do an orange and two natural. I'm really excited about these craft kits because it's such a, it's an inexpensive way for you to try the products. Um, I have some kits on my page also to where you get the surface and everything. Um, but you know, I don't include beads and all that other. They include everything you need except like a set a pair of scissors. Patience. Patience. I don't know, this is kind of calming if you don't make your pattern very difficult. <laughs> okay, two more natural. 
But you can see this is going to make it fairly long. Orange. Almost done with this part of it. And the holes are plenty big enough. Some I've ordered some beads from Amazon and the holes were so small I can barely get um, the jute through it. And it's dangerous to re drill it. Oh yeah. I just had to go buy some thinner twine basically. Okay. I think I kept my pattern. You just push them all the way down. See, that's really long. I mean, that that's, would be good for a dough bowl and stuff. Okay, so then you're gonna turn the page over and they've got instructions starting with nine on the other side. Once you get your pattern on there, make it as long as you want to. If you just wanna make it short, don't use all the beads, save them for something else. You got enough jute here to do two different projects. All right, step nine says to finish the tassel, place the jute you just knotted through the middle um, of the tassel. So we're gonna attach the tassel. Hang on, did I tie a knot at the end of the last bead to hold them in place? Okay, so we're gonna take here where we ran them and we're gonna tie a knot here which I think I can cut this now because I know I'm, that's too much to pull through and I'm not gonna use all that. So I can tie a knot here. I can tie two if I want to. Right down close to your bead and I probably am gonna tie another one. This will keep your beads from moving. Okay. So see, they're not gonna go anywhere like that. Place the jute that you just knotted through the middle of the tassel and double knot it as close to the beads as possible. Trim the excess and tuck the beads back into the jute. So here's where you're gonna have to take this piece of jute and run it through here. Now, since I've got this needle, it's a yarn needle of some sort. I can just run that through there and see, it will pull it right through there. Otherwise, you've got to find the hole there. So you're gonna pull that through there to the end here, and then you're gonna tie it to the end of your, your tassel, the beads to the tassel. A little bit of leeway, but not a whole lot. Does that make sense? You're just tying it on to where the beads are. Okay, so then I'm going to cut this off and what they mean by putting it back up through your bead is just the hole you've got right here, just take that piece of jute and stick it back up in there. And you could glue it a little bit if you wanted to, but it looks like it's part of your knot. No loose end. Yeah. There you go. That, that gives you your tassel at the end of your, um, and that was a little bit too long to stick up in there. I'm gonna cut it off just a little bit. I'm gonna put just a tad of the glue on the end of it and stick it up in there with my needle. That way it should stay in. That glue just gives a little extra right there. Okay, so now is when they say to put your whatever transfer that you have picked out. And so we're gonna take our transfer, cut it out, mark the back. Now you're gonna do what they call fuzzing the transfers. 
These transfers are very sticky. I don't know if you can see that, but see that's very sticky. Um, and anytime you're gonna put it on wood, any hard surface, wood, glass, uh, anything like that, you don't want it quite that sticky. If you're putting it on material, then it doesn't matter. But you don't have to have the tacky cloth. Just pull off your thing and you can even put it on your clothes. And you just want to pick up a little bit of fuzz on the back of that. If this was painted and you put a really sticky surface on there, it can pull up your paint. So we're just going to defuzz it, which really hits fuzz in it. And I'm going to situate it on my wood. We're about where I think is the middle or close enough. And push down. I can see through the transfer where my lettering is. I don't know if you can see. That way I know it's not running off the edges. You can see wood underneath. And you want to just make sure there's no bubbles. And I just take my finger. That's why I can't keep nails on this hand sometimes. Okay. All right, now you've got two colors of uh, sample paste. You could do one word black, one word orange, or see there's several of these that you could do uh, two colors on. But all I'm going to do today is the orange. I'm just gonna do this one in orange, and I'm gonna save this one in for another project or something. All right, so just kind of mash the, tape, the paste that's inside here a little bit. That kind of heats it, and uh, so it'll move. You've got more than enough paste to do this project and I'll give you a little hint on saving your paste. All right, then once I've mashed it, I'm gonna take here at the top and kinda mash it down a little bit so it doesn't all just squirt out when I use it. Take your squeegee. Now these squeegees can be cut. This is a pretty small thing, so I'm, I'll, I'll show you if you want to. If you're using both colors, just take your scissors and cut your squeegee in half. That wasn't even, but doesn't matter. You know, they work the same way. So if you're using black and orange, you use one for orange, one for black, and you don't have to clean them in between. Okay, so I'm gonna cut just a corner. Instead of ripping the whole thing off, I'm just gonna cut a corner because it's not gonna take a whole lot of paste to do this. This is our paste. They also sell ink, but it's used for material, things that you can heat set, um, glasses that you wanna put in the oven and stuff like that. But this is on wood, so all right, I'm just going to squeeze out. If I was doing several projects, I would squeeze this paste into a little container. And in my kits, a uh, couple of them, you get a container to put it in. So I'm just going to, and then you just put it on there. You, just, you don't want to push hard, but you want it in that. You can actually put it on the transfer itself if you want to. And I'm trying not to get too much. Just enough to do. This wood piece. And it seems a little bit thick. So I'm gonna have to get down in here and get some more. And you don't have to worry about getting it on things. It just washes off with water. And like I said, you don't want to push real hard. You want to make sure everything is covered. Let's see, if I had my thing of paste, you take all this excess and you put it back in your container. I doubt I can put it back in there, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put this in my little tub of water. You want to have some water. You can go to the sink but I just have a little bowl of water. Now I'm gonna pull. Try not to pull real hard from a corner. Do top to bottom or side to side. And there you have it. Put your transfer in water. And I'm gonna show you how to clean that in just a few minutes. Normally when you're walk, working with paste and transfers, you wanna make sure you either have a wet rag to just wipe it off. Remember, this is the same paste that I showed you if you do it on a chalkboard, even when it's dry, you can't rub it off, but you can take wet water and wash it off. Safe for kids, it's water-based, chalk paste, and I'm just gonna wipe it off my table like that. Now, 
a tip for your paste. I want, I don't want to throw away the rest of that. So I'm going to just kind of clean it, push it down in there a little bit. And then you just fold this. You can tape it and put it in a Ziploc bag and it will last a while. See, I didn't open my black. So that's how you can save these sample. Is tape this shut. It's got water on it. And I'll stick this in a Ziploc bag. Okay, while that's drying, and it's probably already dry to the touch, you know, I'm gonna show you how to clean your stencil. You can use a paper towel. I'm gonna use our tacky towel just to, and it just, you just wipe the stuff off of your squeegee, use it over and over and over. And then just take your fingers in water. You do not want the paste to sit inside this stencil and dry out. Uh, some paste, some ink, especially black, I think red's pretty bad too, might stain the green part of your stencil, but that doesn't matter. You just don't want anything See, now I've cleaned it. You don't want anything in these stencil part of it. So once you've cleaned it, you're gonna take it out, put it on something to dry off, and you're gonna use a Clorox wipe to wipe the back of it, not baby wipes. They've got a lanolin on them. You want a Clorox wipe. Mine are down in there, and ooh, are they wet. So just get a, just, or whatever disinfectant. And I'm gonna take and just run it here over the back of my stencil. If you really need it, you can clean the front again with it, but you wanna let it dry sticky side up. That kind of reactivates, the, the Clorox wipe reactivates the sticky to where it can be used over and over and over. I have some stencils that I have used probably 15 or 20 times. They may not look great on one side because they might be a little stained, but they still work. So you don't want to let it dry. Just take it straight to your sink or whatever. Um, and then just let it dry on its own. I'm gonna put it right there. Now, I could, if I want to, turn this over. This is dry. And I could do the other side. But that, that's what your project is for this time. This could be put around something, laid in adobo, um, you know, just kind of fix your tassels, get them as short or as long as you want to leave them. And I, I don't know, let me see if they tell you, yeah, it does, step 14 uh, says to wash your stencil in cool water and gently wipe clean with a disinfectant wipe. Dry the stencil with a stick, sticky side up, then replace it, see, because this is shiny, but sometimes it's hard to tell. So the reason you mark the back is so that you know what side to put the stencil back on. So when that stencil is dry, I will put it back on here. Now, I mean, I still have this paste that I haven't opened. Um, so you've got a good bit of orange. I'm gonna show you two other things that you can do. You've, you've got 12 stencils here. Um, you could do half of this. You can buy these little wood rounds on Amazon or in Hobby Lobby and make two or three of these. But let me show you what else you can do. Because the stencil is yours to keep. Once you do the kit and everything, I'm going to, this is just a... Do you say you get 15 times out of, probably out of each stencil? Uh, sometimes more, if you take care of them. This is just a little chalkboard from the Dollar Tree. I paid a dollar for it and it sets up. So say I wanted to do um, the ghost. I'm just gonna cut them out. Mark the back of it. So I know that's the back. And for the ghost, I think I'm gonna use uh, almond latte paste. I didn't bring anything to stir this with. Maybe I can stir it with a needle. Okay, take my stencil off. It's really sticky. I'm just gonna put it on the clothes for a second. 
one, two, three, or whatever. Then I'm going to put it on the chalkboard. You could also write on here with the markers, but I'm just going to put my ghost right here in the. You got him upside down, hadn't you? I don't think so. I'll look. No, he's right. I'm going to put him on there. You could put your teacher's name. You could write Happy Halloween. And then I'm going to just stir my paste a little bit here. I didn't bring a stir stick in here. This, again, is paste. And by this being a chalkboard, if you're making it for your home decor, when Halloween's over, you just wash it off. I'll show you. Don't push real hard. Just make sure you get it all. And then put your extra back in your jar. Does not take much paste. Okay. Put my thing in the water. Cover up my chalk paste so I know it's not going to dry out. Grab a corner. And pull. Put my ghost in the water. Same water. It's a little orange, but it doesn't matter. All right, it looks like I got a little bit of paint right there. And I got some here on my table. I'm just going to take a wet rag and just wipe it off. Now you could take a marker, if you don't have our, we have stencils that have letters, but, but you can write on it and give it as a gift. Let's use the ink. The, the difference between the paste and the ink, of course, the formula, but the paste has a black lid, ink has white lid, so that way you know it's ink. I'm going to ink on this Dollar Tree uh, pot holder. So let's see what I want on it. Let's do it's fall, y'all. I'm just, all I got out was one color, so. But you've got one that says nuts about fall, autumn spices, and apple pies. And let's do that one. And you put all these stencils right back in the little envelope that they came in once you get them cut apart. But these will fit. These are great for small projects, for gifts and stuff. And you get 12. So I'm gonna take it off. I didn't mark the back, let me do that. And I'm just gonna, now I wouldn't have to do this because I'm putting it on material, so. And you could put several things on here. This is going to be a little small for this big pot holder, but I just wanted to show you. I, you can personalize stuff. Use um, the letters and put somebody's name or initial. So I'm just going to rub that on there. And I'm going to take my ink. And get my squeegee. Oh, I had a big one there, but that's okay. Now, the ink is not as forgiving as the chalk paste. If you get some of this ink on this um, pot holder, you're not going to be able to just wipe it off. You might could wash it before you heat set it and give it off. But that's where you want to just make sure your hands are clean. Put your excess back in your jar so you don't waste any. And then make sure you don't have ink. The first thing I did, I think I did a dish towel and I had blue ink on my hands or something and got it on the towel, but, and then just pull it, put it in the water. You can have, okay. You can have more than one stencil in your water. I usually try to have water right by me or take it straight to the sink. So there's your, your pot holder. Now to heat set, anything done with the ink, you want, once this is totally dry, I like to wait till the next day 
and then you take it and you put a piece of parchment paper over it and you take your iron and you heat set it for like four minutes on each side. Um, they may be putting some ink things in kits. We, we don't even know what next month's kit's going to be. But I wanted to open this one for you today and show you the different things. Um, anyway, you would heat set it both sides with parchment paper and your iron and then it's good to go. Or put anything glass, like if I was to put it on a cup, a mug, you put it in the oven on low, like 250. Um, so let me show you how easy, after Halloween, you're done. You wanna put something else on here. You wanna use your Thanksgiving. You just take a wet rag and you just wipe it off. If you don't seal it. You can seal anything on a chalkboard by spraying it with um, Rust-Oleum Clear paint sealer. But if you haven't sealed it, you just wipe it off and now I'm ready to put something Thanksgiving on there. That's why I love their paste and stuff. But it's very simple, very easy. And like I said, this, this would be what you would make with the kit, is the beads and the tassel and stuff. And then use your other stencils for other projects. Again, the craft kit is $19.99. You have to sign up. Once you sign up until you cancel that every month, you will receive a box that has everything in it other than your scissors usually that you would need to make the craft. Um, and then you have that stencil to use over and over and over. Um, I'm pretty sure November, like I said, we don't know what it's going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something for Christmas. But, um, okay, that, and then you still have all these other stencils to use for whatever. And, what do I do with that? I'm going to give away one of those stencils. What do I do with it? Here it is. I'm going to give this one away. I'm not going to send chalk paste and stuff with it, but I'm going to give the stencil away. And one reason I'm not sending chalk paste is I can just put this in an envelope, and if I put chalk paste and stuff in here, and they run it through a machine, paste is gonna go everywhere. So you can purchase your chalk paste. You actually can use the acrylic paint. Um, you just have to be careful because it's thinner than chalk paint. But I have used paint from Hobby Lobby. They, back in the um, artist part, they have a paint called, I believe it's Master's Touch, uh, thick, and I use it a lot on stuff. You just have to really make sure you wash your stencil right away because that that type of paint might um, stick in there and I don't know that it would wash off as easy on a chalkboard I'm not sure I've tried that but anyway I'm giving this away you don't have to do anything except just come in on this video on Monday I'm going to go live again with another Magnolia design from now till Christmas I would like to go live twice a week and I'm thinking around noon on Monday with and call it Magnolia Monday. And we're gonna be doing some fun home decor with stencils and stuff. And um, then later in the week, I'll go live maybe in the evening one day, but I'll give you a heads up. I'm not sure what day yet. Maybe Thursdays, it may be Fridays. But all you have to do is comment on this video uh, to where I see your comment. Monday, when I go live, I'm gonna just scroll through the comments and just randomly stop somewhere. And that person, no matter what you commented, whether you liked it or you hated it, <laughs> or you're doing an awful job, whatever, whatever the comment is, um, I'm gonna mail you this stencil and uh, would love to see projects you do with it. So that's our live for today. Um, so I will be back Monday at 12 noon and I will send out a notice ahead of time too. So if you're interested in the craft kit, uh, and making your own decor, I put the link to my website with Magnolia Designs up in the top of this video. Just click on it and then click on Craft Kits and sign up. You are committed for three months. You have to stay in for three months. After that third month, you can cancel. So um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm glad they're doing it because uh, people will be able to do some of their own decor and it's it's just a fun craft even to do with kids there's nothing about this that a child couldn't sit down and do which sounds crazy when I said I'm the 
instructions confused me a little bit in one spot. So, But it worked fine doing it the way they said. Had it been me, I probably would have stenciled first, let it dry, and then worked on my beads and then attached it. But this way it's all connected and it worked great. So thank you for being with me today. I will go back and catch any questions you might have. If you have any questions about Magnolia, uh, just private message me and I'll get back to you. And uh, you should be able to click on that link and look at all their different stencils. I love the amazing gray stencil and cannot wait for it to come back in stock. You can go to my Etsy shop, and which is just uh, etsy.com slash shop slash creations by Julie and look under kits. I have several kits put together um, if you want to just try something with Magnolia and maybe you don't want to commit three months just order something to play with. So anyway, I appreciate y'all being here and I will see you Monday at noon. Bye y'all.